Well, Shabbat Shalom. I just want to welcome everyone to the Sabbath Day Conference Call. And uh, today we have a special guest with us, uh, Brother Dan Hume. He's been with us several times before, and I hope you'll go and listen to some of his other uh, YouTube videos that he has done for our fellowship group. So, uh, Brother Dan, we're really glad you're here today. Well, thank you, uh, Barbie. It's uh, good <clears throat> good to be back with you and the callers on this call. And um, I wanted to start off saying uh, that I think that we've all had the experience at one time or another of uh, re-looking or re-reading a, a scripture that we've read many times before, but uh, in 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 that rereading of scripture uh it's like some the light goes on and we see something that we just never saw before i guess perhaps it has something to do with the with the lord's timing in any case um i want to do a brief uh teaching today on uh, what it was that I saw back in August uh, from the book of Numbers. And this, like I said, is a passage I've read many times, but I've never saw it in the way that I saw it this uh, last August. So um, with that, uh, we're going to get started uh, with this uh, passage that I'm referring to is Numbers 9, uh, verses 3 through 12. And uh, I'll go ahead and uh, and uh, start reading this. Uh, uh, it says, On the 14th day of this month at twilight, you shall keep it at its appointed time, that's referring to the Passover, according to all of its rites and ceremonies, you shall keep it. So Moses told the children of Israel that they should keep the Passover. And they kept the Passover on the 14th day uh, of the first month, month at twilight in the wilderness according uh, to all that the Lord commanded Moses so the children of Israel did. Now there were certain men who were defiled by a human corpse so that they could not keep the Passover on that day and they came from uh, they came before Moses and Aaron that day and those men said to him we have become defiled by a human corpse why are we kept from presenting the offering of the Lord at its appointed time among the children of Israel? And Moses said to them, Stand still that I may hear what the Lord will command concerning you. Starting in verse 9, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, If any one of you or your posterity is unclean because of a corpse, or is far away on a journey, he may still keep the Lord's Passover. On the 14th day of the second month at twilight, they may keep it. They shall eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall leave none of it until morning, nor break one of its bones according to all the ordinances of the Passover. They shall keep it. Now, at this point, we're going to go back and we're going to look at these verses one at a time in a little bit more depth to see exactly what they reveal. In Numbers 9.3, it says, On the 14th day of this month at twilight, you shall observe it, the Passover, at its appointed time. You shall observe it according to all of its statutes and according to all of its ordinances. Now, I have uh, emboldened uh, uh, certain parts of this verse and underlined it to underscore its importance. It begins on the 14th day. So that means that all of the statutes and ordinances uh, that the children of Israel were to observe were to take place on the 14th day. It does not say the 14th and the 15th. It says the 14th. And it says all of its statutes uh, and all of its ordinances were to be completed on that day. And uh, <clears throat> so 
There's no suggestion that part of the ordinances were to be created on the 14th and part of them were to be treated, uh, completed on the 15th. They were all to be completed on the 14th. There are four main statutes uh, slash ordinances of the Passover that are to be observed on the 14th. In the same way that it takes four consecutive seasons to make up a year, there are four main consecutive statutes slash ordinances which make up the Passover. The Passover, with all of its elements, constitute one undivided whole. Numbers 9-3 clearly show that the Passover takes place in its entirety on the 14th not on the 14th and 15th. Here are the four main statutes slash ordinances of the Passover. Let's see, get this thing to turn over to the next slide here. Okay, here we go. The first one of those ordinances is X, can be found in Exodus 12, verse 6. You shall keep it, which is referring to the Lamb, until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel is to kill it at twilight. In the Hebrew, that word twilight uh, literally means between the evenings. So in our vernacular, we would say um, mid-afternoon, uh, I would say, would be a fair one. And the second uh, uh, ordinance found in Exodus 12.22 says, And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike or apply to the lintel and the doorpost with his blood that is in the basin, and none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. Here's the third uh, ordinance or statute, Exodus 12:8. They shall eat the flesh that same night, roasted with fire, and they shall eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Houston, we have a problem. According to evening, the evening, start of the day theology, eating the Passover that night would be the 15th, not the 14th. We are never told to observe the Passover on the 15th. Here's the fourth main uh, uh, statute slash ordinance found in Numbers 9, verses 11 and 12. In the second month, on the 14th, at twilight, they shall observe it or kill it. They shall eat the Passover with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall leave none of it until morning, nor break a bone of it. According to all the statutes of the Passover, they shall observe it. This can, can only be a reference to Numbers 9-3, because Numbers 9-3 is the only passage in context that commands us to observe the Passover according to all of its statutes and ordinances on the 14th. It would be impossible to be obedient to the commandment of leaving none of it till morning and still be the 14th if a new day started at evening before the Passover meal was even eaten, which, according to evening to evening proponents, is when the fat 15th began. Furthermore, this command, which was to be completed on the 14th, not the 15th, could not have been fully obeyed until the morning came, which had to be the start of the next day, i.e. the 15th following Passover. The day starts in the morning. To say that the last three of the four main statutes slash ordinances of, starting with the second one, eating the Passover that night, 
the third one, not to break a bone of it, and the fourth one, to leave none of it until morning, can be completed during the night of the 15th, is reading into the text what is not there. This is called isogesis, or reading into the text, not exegesis, or extracting out of the te text, which is a gross violation of the basic rules of scriptural interpretation in favor of man's tradition, which is what so many evening start of the day proponents unwittingly do today. As Yeshua said in Mark 7, verse 8, you, shall, you leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. To reiterate, obedience to leaving none of it until morning, nor break a bone of it, as found in Numbers 9, 12, cannot be completed on the 15th that had to be completed on the 14th. Adhering to the traditional evening start of the day necessitates ignoring the command of Numbers 9, verses 11 through 12, pertaining to requirements of completing all the statutes slash ordinances on the 14th. We are never instructed to complete them during the night of the 15th. And here's an end note that I felt was important to include. From Exodus 12, 27, we read that you shall say, it is the Passover sacrifice of the Lord who's passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians and delivered our household. So the people bowed their heads and worshiped. It is important to note that the term Passover, commonly understood to be derived from the Lord's passing over the houses of the children of Israel at midnight, that took place on the 14th and not on the 15th as, as the tradition of the evening to evening <coughs> proponents demand. If <coughs> If evening-to-evening -evening proponents were consistent with their doctrine, they would not teach or imply that the passing over of the Lord's judgment at midnight took place on Passover and start teaching that the Lord's Passover or passing over as well as the Passover meal took place on the Feast of Unleavened Bread, uh, which is the 15th, and not on Passover proper, which is the 14th. That would at least be consistent with their theology. However, there are few people who know their scriptures who would believe that. Perhaps that is why they don't teach it. So whose report will you believe? The report of the Lord or the report that tradition would want us to believe? And that concludes uh, uh, today's uh, brief uh, presentation.